One day, Job gets into an interaction with God and began to question God. He says, God, uh, I mean, uh, how come I'm going through what I'm going through? And God began to ask him some serious questions. He said, by the way, have you commanded your morning? And God looked at him and said, do you realize that any time the sea is uh, rolling, it gets to a place by the beach, it stops. Do you know who tells the sea to stop its waves where it stops? He was silent. He said, never thought of that. He said, do you know who created the Orion? He says, do you know who created the Pleiades? He began to ask him all these wonderful things thousands of years after scientists would develop and discover and say, well, we've just discovered a new planet. It's all recorded in the word of God. So what is new under the sun that is outside the purview of God? I'm just trying to help somebody this morning who is going through a challenging season in your life that feels neglected. You feel God has forgotten about you. You feel your situation is an impossible situation. Not with God. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, I want to share with you these teachings we've been talking about, which has to do with your emotions, because every single one of us got emotions, and the enemy will love to dwell in that place. But we want to be like Jesus, who said, the devil is coming, Satan is coming, but he will not find a place in me. And if our Bible even says that, do not let the sun go down on your anger. And then he goes on to say, the reason why you got to deal with your anger, when you're upset with me, upset with somebody, you got to deal with it within 24 hours is so you don't give a place to the devil because when you are upset with somebody over an extended period you know what happens the enemy begins to give you ideas about that person he begins to formulate all kinds of craftiness in your mind concerning that person he now causes you to take the real lenses off your face and give you a dark goggles because what you are seeing is not necessarily what it is it depends on what you put on your face. If you have a clear glasses, you will see things with clarity. But if you have something with Polaroid or Polaris in it, with some color pigmentation in a glass, if it is cayenne, if it is yellow, if it is blue, everything is going to appear by the color of the screens on your face. So when you are covered, as it were, with hurt, you are covered with a, a, a emotions of negativity. Everything you're going to see out there is going to be interpreted through the lens on your eyes. And I tell you what, the enemy will love you to have this lens on over an extended period. Because that is the only way he can use you, he can communicate, and he can cause you to do his bidding. Amen? But I tell you something, if you give the devil the opportunity, he will control the show. He will sure do that. If you give him the opportunity, what would he do? He will control the show. Some of us in our house right now, you know very well, you're not in charge. The devil is in charge because you've given him the opportunity to do so. And so he's running the show. Mom and, and daughter is living in the same house three months. They're not talking. The enemy is running the show because you've given him the opportunity to do so. Somebody tell the devil this morning no more. No, tell the enemy no more. The times are changing. The seasons are changing. Now, when it comes to emotion, Jesus makes it very clear that you don't have the power to stop it from happening. You don't have what it takes for it not to happen. It will happen. And I love it so much because you and I, God wants you to know that because they're going to be happening everywhere around our life, we got to get so used to it that we get to a place in life where all those emotions do not affect us. It is possible to get to that place in your walk with God. Amen. Bible says that Enoch walked with God simply means they took a walk. If he lived 100 years, for 100 years he was walking with God. He walked with God over the period of his life, then got to a place. And you know how when you are dating a woman for a first time, I don't know if some of you did that. You will walk the woman to a house and then she will walk you back to your house and then you will walk her back to a house. But your original goal was just to walk her home. The young ones in church are laughing. They don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you are too old school. You don't get it. You walk her and then she walks you back and then you walk. Bible says in that same way, Enoch walked with God. And then they got to a place. Enoch looked back. 
God looked back and God was like, man, it's too far from your home. Why don't we go to my house? The Bible says he walked right into heaven with God. But that is what happens when you truly take a divine walk with God. The man never saw death. He walked right into heaven. And the Bible says all his life, he walked with God. Now, God wants you to walk with him. If you are listening to me on Facebook, I want you to know God wants you to take a real walk with him. There is a place you come in your walk with God. You don't any longer get impacted by the things of this world. We become so fleshy, the things that get our attention are the things of the world. But look at what the Bible says here. We read this scripture two weeks ago, and I want us to recap that again because emotions is a terrible thing when we do not know how to tame it. God wants you to receive power to tame your emotions. There are two things if you can tame, you will become a successful and a powerful child of God. If you can tame your tongue and you can tame your emotions. I look at my own life and I think about it. If God by his grace did not help me with my emotions, I will be a wreck. I will be a wreck because you know what? Throughout my life, I will have every single reason to blame all kinds of emotions and doors that were opened by the enemy to trigger my emotions and have that as a reason not to accomplish the purpose of God over my life. I could blame my father all day for being a father that was not responsible. My father never spent a dollar in my life. My father never took care of me. My father did everything negative you could imagine. I could become reckless with my life and blame it all day on my father. And there are a lot of people today whose life are being managed and controlled as it were by somebody that is dead and gone. My father died 37 years ago. I could be sitting here crying that I couldn't finish my GED because my father was not responsible. I could complain all day long and be emotionally charged and have that as a reason for being a homeless man on the street, for being a criminal in the street, for being a beggar in the street. I could blame all that all day on my father. But God wants somebody listening to me this morning to be responsible. You know, the children of Israel had a proverb. Anytime they were in some kind of a bad place, they will quote that proverb. And you know what that proverb is? The fathers have eaten sour grape and the teeth of the children are set on edge. God got so angry with that proverb. One day he had to make a declaration that from today, I don't want to hear this proverb ever spoken in Israel. The fathers have eaten sour grape and the teeth of the children are set on edge. You know what that means? What they were trying to say is that whatever we are going through is a generational thing. I'm going through what I'm going through because I didn't eat those sour grapes. It was my parents that ate them, but I feel it. I feel the effect in my teeth. God says, you shut up. I don't want you to put any blame on your parents anymore. He says, the soul that sin shall die. So you don't tell me that what I'm going through is because of what my parents did. Now, you cannot sit here and say that there are uh, demons and obia, all kinds of witchcraft that has been done all the way back from Jamaica, from Ghana, from Africa, somewhere in the Caribbean, upon me, from my ancestors, my parents did some terrible things spiritually, and it's the reason why I can't have a good marriage. It's the reason why I can't raise godly children. It's the reason why I can't have a stable job. It's the reason why my marriage is not working out. You cannot do any of that. You know why? Bible says when you got born again, you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you were taken from the kingdom of darkness. It means you are no longer in that place where the effects of all the things your parents, your grandparents did, those things do not have any effect on you any longer. So stop using that as an excuse. Bible says you were yanked out of that situation and you were translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You cannot be in the kingdom of Jesus Christ and still tell me that under the watch of Jesus Christ, there are demons in the past that are still infiltrating. You telling me my God is not powerful enough you know how to protect your kids and you telling me your god doesn't know how to protect you bible says he will form a hedge of protection around us do you understand that Amen. 
Bible says he neither sleeps nor slumber. Do you know what that means? It means he's watching over you when you are sleeping. He's watching over you when you don't know what is going on. God is watching over his children. And that is what the Bible says. There is no weapon that is fashioned against you that will prosper. But in judgment, you will condemn. Why? Because God is on your side. It is time for the church of Jesus Christ to rise up. You are no longer ordinary because the greater one is in the inside of you. He's on your side. He's bringing you victory upon victory. I love this because you don't even have to fight the battles anymore. He says you got to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. It means it is God that fights your battles. It is God that defeats the enemy. We, we just stand to see that which God is able to do on our behalf. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now when this understanding comes, that is how anxiety leaves. When this revelation hits you, that is how depression leaves your life. When this understanding comes into your spirit, that is how hope is established in you. When God's word comes alive in you, the fear the enemy is trying to push into your heart suddenly disappears because you know why? Light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place when the light of God, the word of God comes in, that darkness of the enemy must be taken away that is why even right now I see the blanket of darkness over your life being withdrawn I see that darkness of hopelessness over your family being taken away even right now and the light of God is shining over your children, the light of God is shining over your marriage the light of God is upon your career, there is a newness that is coming into your life this morning somebody ought to stand up and shout unto the Lord, he is Deserves all the praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Our God deserves every praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a new season, people. It's a new season. You cannot enter into the new with the old. Oh, I love this. Bible says you don't take a new wine and put in an old wine skin. Some of us want a new wine, but we don't want to change the bottles. You can't have a new wine in an old wine skin. Bible says if you try to do that, the potency of the new wine will break in pieces the old bottle. I'm trying to help you understand why you are having a problem in your life. Because you're trying to embrace the newness of God with the old ideology. You cannot embrace the new things God is getting ready to do in your life until you change your mindset. Put the book of Romans chapter 12 on the screen. The Bible says that you must be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The only thing you renew is things that are expired. And if you are walking around with an expired driver's license, the cops are going to stop you. No wonder the demons are stopping us every step of the way. Because we are walking with expired understanding of the way God operates. You know, I had an arranged message to preach, but let me allow the spirit of God to flow because somebody needs to come out. Somebody needs to come out of this challenging place. God wants to get you out. You so young, you feel so disappointed about your life. You just think life is not going anywhere. I tell you, life is going somewhere. As long as Jesus is on your side, life is going somewhere. You are not what the system says you are. You are what God has already declared you to be. He said you are on top only and never beneath. He says you are the apple of my eyes. Do you understand who you are in Christ? You are the one he died on the cross of Calvary for you. Bible says whilst we were yet in our sins, he died on the cross for us. That is how important you are in the eyes of God. Glory to Jesus. The book of Romans chapter 12 says, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the message of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Acceptable. Your living sacrifice must be acceptable. And he calls that as the basic sacrifice you could ever give to God. Your reasonable act of sacrifice. You know what he's talking about? He says you got to deal with your flesh. Deal with your flesh. Some of us are so stuck in the flesh, we can't move past that. Daddy did that to me 35 years ago. I just can't let it go. Daddy is dead. You had his funeral. You had a memorial service. 
and daddy in the grave is still controlling your emotions. Dead man managing your life. There are people that broke your heart. They disappointed you. They said they were going to marry you. They vanished into oblivion. You can't even find them. You can't trace them. You know those series they do on TV? Gone without what? Without a trace. <laughs> it's gone. It's been 35 years. You can't trust any man anymore. And you have gotten to a place where you believe all men are just like him. It's still stuck in your mind. You just can't let it go. Some of you, that which happened in the past is even a good thing. That man was so good. So even though God is bringing you a new person in your life, you are judging everybody by that man's standard. And so you can't embrace anything new. Bible says that you must do what? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. And how are you going to do that? Look at verse 2. It says, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to take your body. I wanted to take a knife and self-murder yourself. Because you don't put anything, any animal on the altar of sacrifice without killing it. True? How do you sacrifice without killing it? God wants you to shut the mouth of your emotions. Amen. You're so sensitive. You are sensitive in the office. You are sensitive at home. You are sensitive to everything except the spirit of God. How do you walk in the spirit and mortify the flesh? God is speaking, you bind, that is a devil. How can how, you know what I'm going through and you want me to sow my last seed? I bind you, devil. You so much in the flesh, you can't even pick the things of the spirit. He says, you are no longer supposed to conform to the world I brought you out from. You know, God can take you out of the world, but it's your job to take the world out of you. <laughs> God would always get you out of Egypt, but it's upon you to take the Egypt out of your heart. And how do you do that? Bible says cleansing only happens by the hearing of the word. And if you don't want to spend quality time hearing the word of God, how do you cleanse yourself? He took them out of Egypt. But every challenge that comes, they said, if we were in Egypt, we should be having lunch by now. If we were in Egypt, we should be eating some watermelon. Those are watermelon Christians. Or we should be having some garlic. Those are garlic Christians. They've been taken out of Egypt, but their mind is still in Egypt. They've been taken out of the world, but their heart is still in the world. That is why God says, these people, you don't know them. They talk about me all day with their mouth, but their hearts are far away from me. You see, God doesn't judge your faith by your mouth. He measures your faith by your feet. The steps that you are taking, the decisions you are making based on the word of God. That is how God judges your faith. It is not the things you say because talk is cheap. Everybody can talk a good game until you put them on the field. It's easy to talk a good game. Oh man, he missed that. Oh man, that was so easy. How could he miss that? Put that same person on the field of play. And let's see what a person would do. It would be a disaster. Talk is cheap. He says, you're no longer supposed to conform to the pattern of this world, but you must be what? Transformed. Transforming is a powerful word. It's unfortunate in our world today. We've used trans for too many bad things. Trans something, trans something. But God truly wants you to be transformed. And the transformation God wants you to have is a transformation that happens in the mind. I need you to understand that your mind is the greatest place of engagement with the enemy. Do you know how many times you are thinking of one thing? Over and over again, should I, should I not, should I, should I not, should I, should I not? You do that millions of times within a week over one little thing because there is something God is prompting you to do and at the same token, the enemy is prompting you to do the direct opposite. 